So apparently there are some people out there who think you absolutely need weights to build muscle and that you can't do it with just your body weight. And if that's you, you're just wrong. When it comes to building muscle, there are three requirements that you need regardless of the training you choose to do to build that muscle. And that's adequate muscular tension, adequate training volume, and sufficient protein and fuel used to repair and grow that muscle. Requirement number one is muscular tension. And that tension is simply pull applied to that muscle fiber through any means you want. And that can be body weight training, weighted exercises, or even some amount of stretch. Applying appropriate tension to that muscle fiber is going to cause the cell to talk to your nervous system in your brain and request more nutrients and growth so that it can better cope with more load the next time that you put it there. There are a few strategies you can implement in your training to make sure that you're getting the most tension out of those muscle fibers that you can within each set. The first one of those is making sure that you're training that muscle and taking that muscle to length throughout a wide range of motion during each exercise. The tension required to stimulate growth doesn't seem to be generated quite as well with static holds and isometrics, so using a mix of concentric and eccentric reps through a full range of motion, especially at the lengthened range where the muscle is going to be under some stretch, such as when you're deep in a push-up or at the lower part of a pull-up, is going to make sure that you're getting that tension throughout the fullest range and also adding some degree of stretch to enhance as much tension as you can. Making sure you're taking the muscle to that full length is so important that some hypertrophy and muscle growth researchers have even found that during isolated exercises, even a partial range of motion can be better than a full range if you're making sure to emphasize that length and range and provided that each set is taken close to failure. Range of motion isn't the only thing important for generating tension, you need to make sure that you're in appropriate rep ranges to generate as much tension as possible on each set. The rep ranges that we thought were effective for hypertrophy and muscle growth years ago were typically around that 6 to 12 range or even 8 to 12 in a more narrower range, but these days with more recent research coming out, they found that anywhere from 3 to 30 or even sometimes higher reps are just as good as other reps for producing as much muscle growth as possible, provided that each set is taken close to failure. If your primary goal is muscle growth and size, I would personally recommend sticking somewhere between the 6 to 15 rep range as this is going to give you a good chance to get close to failure on each of those exercises without you having to use a load so heavy that your technique starts to break down and you start to risk injury and the sets also won't be in that high rep range where you're doing 40, 50 or 60 plus reps and burning yourself out, taking more time to recover and more time just to perform the exercises. Using any of those rep ranges will generate tension on all your muscle fibers within each set as long as you take that close to failure. In saying that, make sure you do mix your rep ranges up either within session, from workout to workout, or within different parts of your program, as it is important to get different types of stimulus on your muscles to produce different energy system demands and make sure that each muscle fiber, whether it be the slow twitch or the fast twitch type fibers, are both getting work throughout those workouts. Another important consideration about tension is that the tension that your muscles experience from one workout to another workout isn't always going to be the same even if you're using the exact same exercises and the exact same loads and performing the exact same number of reps from workout to workout. This is because over time your muscles are going to get stronger and they're going to adapt to that stimulus that you put on them in that first workout and eventually the numbers that you are using for that weight or the numbers you are using for your reps and sets are no longer going to be adequately heavy enough to make sure that all the fibers in that muscle work and all the energy in that muscle is adequately depleted and eventually your muscle is going to get so comfortable with it that it won't have to use all its fibers, it'll only use a few of them and it's not going to get close to burning out its energy systems if you are still using that same rep range and that same load six months down the track. This is because over time your muscles are obviously going to get stronger and they're going to adapt to the load and stimulus that you're putting on them. So if you want to keep generating that same tension throughout all the muscle fibers and not letting your muscles just get lazy, use a few fibers and not be even tired or burnt out by the end of your set, you're going to have to start increasing either your reps, your volume overall of number of sets, or you're going to have to start making the difficulty harder by changing the variation of an exercise such as moving from a knee push up to a full push up with a lot of the exercises also being full body type movements and little form details making a lot of difference to that difficulty overall, I would recommend trying to take each set close to failure, even if that means that you're stepping outside of the rep range that you thought you were gonna get to make sure that you're still getting this progressive overload from session to session. If you're a little bit more flexible like this, it's an easy way to make sure that you're getting progressive overload from session to session by going close to failure on each set, even if it means it's not quite fitting into that perfect rep range that you had in mind at the start of the workout. The next fundamental requirement for muscle growth is the volume of training that you're using. Volume in weightlifting is typically calculated as reps times sets times load or the weight that you use, but because it's a bit harder to quantify the weight and the difficulty of each of the exercises when you're doing body weight or calisthenics exercises, it makes more sense to approach your volume by simply counting the number of hard sets that you take close to failure, which is what we're more interested anyway in terms of muscle growth. 
Research suggests that for most people, somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 hard sets taken close to failure each week for a muscle group is going to be enough stimulus to adequately optimize the amount of muscle growth that you're going to get from that muscle group in that time frame. Some people manage to get away with even higher volume with more like 25 or 30 or even more sets and still see good results from that added extra amount of training. Where you decide to sit in that range is going to depend on your level of training, the amount of time you have and how well you're continuing to progress at that given volume. I definitely recommend that people start more at the lower end of this volume range as going too hard too fast is going to end up costing you in other areas of your training such as your strength progress and in your form and technique. Another thing to keep in mind is that doing too much is just as bad as or arguably even worse than doing too little. If you continually add volume and sets to your workouts, you're eventually going to hit a point where you've already optimized the amount of muscle growth that you can get out of your muscles in that time frame and adding more workouts and more load at that point is just going to start to add more recovery time to your schedule and is going to end up overloading muscles and joints eventually and start making you risk higher injuries. Sitting within that 10 to 20 rep range for most people is going to be that optimal range like I said and trying to go beyond this isn't going to stimulate more growth, it's simply going to tax your energy and it's going to make sure that you perform worse on your other sessions. This of course is going to mean that you end up performing worse in your other sessions which is going to be a tax on your strength and size gains overall but it's also going to mean that any of that extra energy that you wanted to put into your body to facilitate growth, a lot of that is going to end up going towards simply recovering from all these ridiculously big sessions that you've added to your program. The third requirement for building muscle is fuel and like everyone knows protein is the number one macronutrient needed to build and repair muscle tissue. When it comes to your daily intake, studies vary a little bit and your body composition can vary your recommendations a bit too, but as a general rule of thumb, sitting between 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram or 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of body weight per day is going to put you right in the hot spot where you're going to be building as much muscle as possible and repairing adequately after your sessions. So for example, if you're a 70 kilo person, you should be eating somewhere between about 112 grams to 154 grams of protein per day if you're wanting to maximize muscle growth. Another important consideration with your protein intake is how you space that out throughout your day. Research seems to show that having that protein spread out more throughout the day seems to be better for muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth rather than having that simply all together in one or two meals. This is because there's a threshold for stimulating muscle protein growth and repair and once you hit about 30 grams of protein in one meal, provided there's some high quality amino acids in there as well, you're going to be adequately stimulating muscle protein synthesis for a few hours after that meal. Once that dies down after a few hours, you're going to want to eat some more protein again to make sure you ramp up that muscle protein synthesis and keep that growth and repair process going on for as much of the day as possible. So I referred to some essential amino acids there and they're the amino acids that make up the proteins that are going to be most useful for building and repairing muscle. And in general, animal protein sources are some of the best things for these. So if you've got meat, eggs or dairy in those meals, that's probably going to cover your bases for these. But you can get them from plant sources as well, such as soy, beans and legumes. But you might have to be a bit more thoughtful about how you put that together to both hit the total protein requirement for that meal and also make sure you're getting those essential amino acids. A lot of people used to argue a lot about the best time to have that protein based meal around your workouts with some people suggesting that right before or immediately after or even during the workout might be best to try and maximize the amount of muscle growth and repair that you can get. However, according to research, if as long as you're having that protein within about an hour or two before and after the workouts to make sure that you're not going too much of your day without any protein intake at all, you're going to be having adequate muscle protein synthesis going on the entire time and it doesn't really matter if you're having it right before or after or even during your sets. So to put that all together, as long as you're having about 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, and you're spacing that out between anywhere between 3 to 5 meals, and each of those meals has a substantial amount in each meal, you're going to be making sure that you're getting the most protein synthesis and the most muscle growth and repair all throughout the entire day. Now while protein is the building block for muscle growth and repair, you do need to make sure you're getting adequate calories in overall because if you're not getting enough energy from those other carbs and fats, your body will start to take away from the protein that you've eaten and instead of that going towards muscle growth and repair, it's going to be converted into glucose and carbs which will be used for energy just to keep bodily processes going on because you haven't had enough energy intake from the rest of your diet. The ratio of carbs to fats doesn't really matter for muscle growth, but making sure that you've got a minimum amount of both of those is going to mean that you've got enough carbs in your system to perform well during your exercises and resistance training, and enough fats available to produce the hormones you need for both energy and muscle growth and repair, while making sure you've got enough calories overall so that you're not taking away from that protein. 
in general for a fairly active person somewhere between 2,000 to 3,000 calories a day is roughly what's needed to maintain body weight but if you're a fairly active person and you're trying to build muscle you're supposed to be eating a bit more than that to stay in what's called a caloric excess to make sure that you've got all that extra energy available that you need to make sure that the protein goes towards muscle growth and repair and you've got the plenty of energy left over to run the rest of your body. The best way to work out if you're eating too much or too little is to track your weight every day and take an average of that per week. And if you're starting to notice that your weight is going up, it's because you're in a caloric excess and that's great. You're going to be putting on some muscle. If it's starting to go down, that's going to mean that you're in a caloric deficit and you're going to be losing weight and struggling to put on muscle. And that's where you need to start bumping up your overall food intake and especially focusing on that area with the protein. In saying that, if you're putting on more than one to two kilos or about two to four pounds per month, that's probably a little bit excessive and quite a lot of that weight is not just gonna be muscle, it's gonna be fat as well. So you might wanna slow down that rate of change a bit because there's a good chance that once you get down the line to about six or 12 months, you're gonna notice you put on a lot more fat than you thought you would and you're probably gonna end up having to do some kind of cut to bring yourself back down again, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but might not be the way you wanna go if you're just trying to put on as much muscle as possible and look good at the same time. All right, so those are the big three fundamentals needed for anyone to build muscle, regardless of the training you choose. So if you think I've missed anything important there, comment that down below. If you have any questions, add that down there as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.